heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Hello once again. Thank you for watching this television program. I'm John Shannon Sr. I'm an evangelist in the Churches of Christ. Today we have another good lesson from you, for you, from God's Word. Today's lesson is taken from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 8. And it's called Snake Talk. Snake Talk. I hope that's interesting to you. But we'll see uh, the first scene and first deception. Uh, Adam and Eve are, are seeing because of snake talk, especially Eve. So in our particular text that we have, let's go down the text and read it together first, and then we'll unpack the text. And I'll give you the outline. I'll give the interpretation of the text and make some real good applications. I hope that you're prepared for this study. Genesis chapter 3, uh, 1 through 8. Let's begin our study. The text says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1 beginning, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of, the, of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, For God doeth knoweth that in the day that ye, ye eat thereof, then ye, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. See that? That should be small g, gods. Uh, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasure to be to the eye and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband uh, with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. Look at that. And they knew that they were naked. And they saw, uh, sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool, in the, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife did hide themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, I took my time and ran over that text. Now, I hope that you read along with me. Now, here's the outline. Point number one, we have the snake and his shrewd process. Point number two, the snake and his seducing power. Point number three, the snake and his successful purpose. Now let's run down this text here and unpack it. Pack this text. Shrewd process. Point number one, look at this now. The deceitful agent. It says, now the serpent 
was more subtle, cunning, than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. Well, where did he come from? God made him. All right. The discussing agent. Here's an agent that can speak. And he said unto the woman, now, had it been me there, no way on the sun that I would get that close to a snake letting on talk to one. If you hear a snake talking, you can guarantee one thing, it's trouble ahead. Are you listening? Well, the discussing agent, and he said unto the woman, watch him create the doubt. Watch it. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Watch the distortion. And the woman said unto the serpent, get it now. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, let me show you something. The Bible that they had was not very large. It wasn't in writing, but it was a spoken word. Now, I want you to compare something here. Listen to me careful. We're going to compare Genesis chapter 2, 16 to 17, and Genesis chapter 3, 2 through 3. Got it? Now, let's compare the text. Got it? Now, let's lick your fingers and go back to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 16. All right? Let's look at it. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 16. Listen to what it says. Watch it now. Now, watch. You, you'll see that Eve misquoted. All right. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou may freely eat. Oh, she left something out. Freely eat. Watch verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, God says freely eat. She left that out. She adds something as well. God didn't say anything about touching it. That's what she added. You know, it's very important that individuals quote the Bible like it is. That's why many times I'll take my time and read it. Now, the serpent could say, you know, I've got this silly girl. I've got this silly woman. She doesn't even know her Bible. God didn't say, look, look at verse number two and three. Watch this here. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the, uh, watch it, of the fruit of the trees of the, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. No, God didn't say that. That's what she said. And the devil said, well, I got this silly girl now. I've got her. I got her right where I want her. She doesn't know the Bible. And that's the way the devil and his agents trick us today when we don't know the Bible. Snake talk. Oh, boy. All right. Did you compare that? Study that. Now, seducing power. Watch the denial. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Well, I guess the old serpent would say, 
if this silly woman can add something to what God say, I can add something. You know what she added? You can't touch it. God didn't say nothing about that. God said you shall uh, uh, not eat of it lest you die. She said touch. And she left a word out, freely eat. She just said eat. So the servant said, well, I got her now. He just added one word. He shall not surely die. Mm. See that? Denial. Well, delusion. And for God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open, watch it, and ye shall become as gods. Now, now watch this now. I said earlier, small G, well, just think about something. Were there any false gods during that time? No. What false gods? What didn't the false gods? I believe there's the point here. This has always been man's problem. When I say man, I mean mankind. They think that they're smart as God and they want to be God. That's the problem. Anytime individuals desire to be God, our greatest God, we're going to get in trouble. See, look what this Satan did here. He said, uh, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. A delusion. Watch the desire. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasure to the eyes, pleasing to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Wait a minute. I could go so far here, I could go way off, but I, I better not do it. I could talk about humanism. You know, the world in which we live, a humanist. You know, men want to be God. Uh, you know, we, 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 men in America and all over the world, they think they're smart as God. They really think they're smart as God. They want to be equal with God. They don't want to be submissive to God. They, uh, they think they are just as strong as God. Let me give you a case in point. Who ever heard of Superman? Superman, that's humanism. Who ever heard of a man flying? Who ever heard of a man doing all that kind of stuff? That's humanism. What about the hope? That's humanism. Men always think that they're the powerful as God. That's wrong. Be careful about humanism. That's a little scary. Now I'll get back to the main lesson here. Are you listening to me? So she took of it. That all right? Uh, and a tree of to be designed to make one wise. Decision. Watch the decision. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Look at that. She made the decision. Let me stop you. Where did she learn to make that decision? Sometimes we say that, you know, evil communication corrupt. That's right. Did she learn from her parents? Nope. She didn't learn from God. She made a choice. We need to be very careful about making decisions and choices on what we think or what some devilish person have concocted to cause man or us to disobey God. Well, she made that decision. Young people, be careful about making decisions about from snake talking people. All right? Listen to this. Distribution. And gave also unto her husband with her. Watch it. Watch the disobedience. And he did eat. Now, all because of snake talk, everything from now on out is going to change. 
God has got to start uh, another work. Not a physical work, but a spiritual work to redeem mankind. Are you listening? Please listen. We find that Gen in Genesis 1, 2, that God finished his work and he saw that it was good and it, it was very good. But when man sinned, God had to start another work and Christ finished that work and that work was redemption, a scheme of redemption. God had to do it. Genesis 3, 15. Are you listening? Well, let's go a little further. Successful purpose. Watch it. The death after disobedience comes death. And the eyes of them both were open. Watch it. Look at it. We have from sin to shame. That's what sin does. From sin to shame. And they knew that they were naked. How did they know that? See what happened about sin? Sin and shame. From shame to shame, watch it. And they s sold fig leaves to themselves together and made themselves aprons. From sham to separation. Look at that. Is that good? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of, God, of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, how are you going to hide from God? Now, look at it. Now, they're separated from God. All because, watch it, Adam, wife, listen to the snake. Got it? Now, the Bible over in Timothy talks about the woman being the seed. Adam, Adam wasn't the, the seed. He was just disobedient. But this woman was the seed. She was the seed over snake talk. Had I been in there, I never would talk to a snake. If it was left up to me, we would still be in the Garden of Eden. Are you listening? Now, let's make a few applications here. We got a little time here left. I don't know what the fruit was. Maybe you say it was an apple. I don't know what it was. The Bible doesn't say. But she didn't have any business dealing with it. Are you listening? Now, here's another thing you need to listen to. Now, that wasn't the only tree in the garden. That was the only one that God said, you can't touch it. You can't eat of it, brother. Not to, you can't eat of that, but all the rest of them, you can. Let me throw this point out. You married men, you married women. If you're married, that's the only person that you need to fraternize with. The only person, are you listening? I don't need to get graphic, but to have an intimate relationship with your marriage partner. All the rest of them are off limits. Did you hear that? Can you understand that? I'm making some application. Now, you can listen to this snake talk if you want to and go out and mess with another woman. You're going to mess a lot of stuff up. A lot of men in churches of Christ and women in church of Christ, they run around on their mate. Why? They've been listening to some snake talk. Snake talk will destroy you. It'll destroy your marriage. It will destroy your family. Snake talk. But scripture talk will deliver you. Wait a minute now. Listen to that. You got snake talk will destroy you. Scripture talk will deliver you. Now, don't you think it would have been real good if, if Eve had a one talk to her husband? So now I know you said that God said that we can't eat of the tree. Well, snake talk came in there. Instead of her going to her husband, she listened to a snake. Now, let me point this, make this observation. Many women, watch, who are married. Now, you remember? They're married. They're married. It was Adam and Eve. It wasn't Adam and Steve 
See that? Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Wasn't no gay, none of that foolishness. Are you listening? Anytime you see a man and a woman, they want to go the opposite way. So I want on Wayne. You know, it's awful when American people, as smart as and the greatest country we are, we want to marry another man. A man married a man, and a woman married a woman. Men want to be women, and women want to be men. There's something wrong with us. That's nothing but snake talk. And it's going to take us down the drain. Oh, boy. Are you listening? Have kids growing up, little kids growing up, little boys think they're girls, and little girls think they're boys. Well, let's make some application here and make it good here. Snake talk will destroy you. Strip the talk <clears throat> will deliver you. Now, you're one or the other. You listen to snake talk or scripture talk. What are you listening to? Watch it. If it's not in the Bible, it's nothing but snake talk. <laughs> Wait a minute. If it's not in the Bible, it's snake talk. <clears throat> Watch this. The Bible is not God's word. Romans 3, 14. Uh, what if some don't believe? God be true. Let every man be a lie. Faith only. James 2, 24, uh, uh, not by faith only. You got it? Are, are you listening? My denominational neighbor say, you're saved by faith only and nothing else. But what about repentance? Acts 17, 30, time of this ignorance, God winked at, <clears throat> but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. <clears throat> Can a person be saved without repenting? Somebody says, well, no. Well, I thought you said faith only. Nope. The only time only is used in James 4.24, a man is justified by faith, are justified and not by faith only. Are you listening? All right. Justified by work and not by faith only. Well, look, look at this. Many churches, many bodies, Ephesians 4 and verse 4, watch it. The Bible says there's one body. Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23 the one body of the church has put all things on his feet and gave him to be a head over all things to the church, which is his body. You got it? So the body is the church, church is the body. Ephesians 2 and verse 16, we are reconciled back to God in one body. Ephesians 3 and verse 6, uh, watch it, the Jew and Gentile in the same body. Same church. If somebody say in a church or do, that's snake talk. But not listen to that. Save folks in all churches. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is also the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Well, Paul just told us in Ephesians 4 and verse 4, there's one body. Now the one body is the one church. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. Now what is he going to say? He's going to save the church. Well, I'm not in the church. Well, you're not going to be saved. Somebody said, well, it doesn't make any difference. In it. Save folks in all churches. Oh, that's not true. That's snake talk. All right. Pretty good. <clears throat> Baptism is not essential. My neighbor, my denominational neighbor, my good Baptist friend, I just love him to death. I love him. I don't want you to think one time I don't like folks in the Baptist church. I love them. I love them in the Pentecost, in the Methodist. I love them. I love everybody. But you're wrong on that. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. Baptism don't have nothing to do with your salvation. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. That sounds good, doesn't it? Now watch Jesus now. Now, you know, the Baptist says in the Baptist standing in Emmanuel, baptism is not essential to salvation but it is part of obedience. So what they'll say is, this is what they're saying. They say, we believe that you need to be baptized, but you're saved before you're baptized. Now that sounds good. They ain't nothing but snake talk. That's snake talk. Watch this. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, his ascension in heaven. He shed his blood, he bought one church. 
He died and he was buried. He rose again the third day. That's the good news. Gospel means good news. That the Messiah has come. And when Messiah come, the kingdom of the church would come. Are you listening? Now, Jesus told his apostles, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That good news. Watch it now. Look, look at this. He that believe it and is not baptized shall be saved. Is that what he said? No, that's what it, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's what the serpent said to E. Ye shall not surely die. All he did, put one word in there, ye shall not surely die. Are you out there listening? He that believeth and is not baptized shall be saved. That's exactly what you're saying. You're saying that you don't. Oh, I, you see it. Now, is that snake talk? There's nothing but snake talk. Now, let's read it right. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, if you say a person don't have to be baptized in order to be saved, you're putting a, a, a word. That ain't nothing but snake talk. Watch it. The snake told Eve, ye shall not surely talk or die. That's snake talk. And this kind of talk right here, he that believeth and is not baptized shall be saved. That's snake talk. All right. Nothing to obey. Acts 2, 36 through 42. They heard the gospel and they obeyed it. Are you listening? And watch this here. One must hear and believe the gospel. Repent of their sins, confess Christ, be baptized. They're blessed. They got to behave and they got to broadcast. You see that? Now, let's look down here. Once saved, always saved. Oh, is that right? Somebody said, the same people that says, he that believeth and is not baptized shall be saved. Those same folk that advocate that, they say, once you're saved, you can do anything in the world. You, you don't, you'll never lose your salvation. All right. Is that right? Well, what about Hebrews 3 and verse number 12? You read Hebrews 3, verse number 12. Lifestyle of sin is okay. No, Titus 2, 11 and 12. You can't live any way you want to live. You got it? Worship anyway. John 4, 24. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I see my time is gone. I wish I had another 30 minutes here to, to do this lesson, but I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Snake talk, taken from Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 8. I hope you enjoyed this. May God bless you richly. Thank you. Hey, heaven came down and glory filled my soul.